hello dears today we can have a lecture on how to approach a patient with wrist and hand pain how to approach a patient with wrist and hand pain okay before going into the topic proper we can look into the importance of wrist and hand in human beings so we can look into the importance of wrist and hand human hand is regarded as the most complex and beautiful pieces of natural engineering in the human body this this the human hand is regarded as the most complex and beautiful pieces of natural engineering in the human body this was narrated by dr george mcgavin dr george mc gav okay human what is the peculiarity of the human hand and compared to animals human hand can bend human wrist can bend straighten move laterally and can even can even rotate okay it gives it gives power grip on one side power grip on one side as well as it gives it allows manipulation of small objects manipulation of small objects with precision with great precision okay since the human hand can perform various activities various activities which are essential for our living wrist and hand gets injured and disease very commonly injured or diseased very common okay now moving to the topic proper okay when someone says that he is having pain over the wrist and hand immediately we think of first one is cts okay second one is dqts okay third one is trigger fingers trigger thumb the trigger finger okay fourth one is ganglia okay and fifth one is oe of carpo metacarpal joint of thumb these are the common diseases which comes into mind when the when a patient comes to us with the features of pain over wrist and hand okay based on the site of the pain conditions can be grouped as 
एंड वॉल आर और डोर्सल डोर्सल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ क्रिस्ट और इट कैन बी रेडियल और अलना ओके द थर्ड वन इज मे ओकर बेस ऑफ द थम ए ऑलरेडी सेट दैट ओ योर सी एन सी थम ओके एंड लास्ट वन इज फॉम एंड डिजिट्स ओके patient evaluation how we will evaluate a patient with wrist and hand pain we should have a thorough knowledge about the anatomy of the wrist and anatomy of wrist and hand we know that we know that the wrist is made up of distal end of radius and ulna eight carpal bones and proximal part of metatar metacarpals okay based on the anatomy of the anatomy of the wrist we can we have to draw a diagram okay तम ओवर इन डायग्राम प्लीज एक्सक्यूज मिडिल फिंगर रिंग फिंगर फिर से लिटिल फिंगर ओके ओके दिस इज एम पाम आर एंड अलनार व्यू ओके so with from the anatomy by looking into the anatomy we can see that can see that uh, in the middle part or in the or in the mid middle area we can see what all in the wall of palmar aspect we can see that in the middle aspect that, that can there can be either cts ulnar nerve involvement okay then comes fcr or fcu tendinitis Made fracture. Okay, this is in the middle, middle part. Okay, whereas, whereas in the medial aspect, that is this area, medial aspect, we can see that there can be. ट्रयांग ट्रयांगुला फैब्रो काटेज कॉम्प्लेक्स इंजुरी देस कर्पाई अलनारी 
into p then then can be luno tricuteral ligament luno tricuteral ligament injury and the last one is piso tricuteral arthritis piso tricuteral arthritis this ends the this ends the palmar and ulnar view okay now we can go into the dorsal aspect okay dorsal and the radial view okay this is little finger ring finger middle finger here is a index finger there is a thumb okay very poor diagram okay here on the dorsal and radial view of the hand in the middle area middle area can see which are the common conditions one is gangling okay second one is carpal boss then extensor tendinitis tendinopathy fourth one is skin box disease and fifth one is gout and other inflammatory conditions okay then on the lateral aspect there will be on the lateral aspect we can see that this is the lateral aspect okay lateral aspect we can see which are the conditions first one is pqts and recurrent stenosynovitis and intersection syndrome second one is basal joint pathology third one is volar ganglia and fourth one is scaffold fracture thorough anatomy for thorough anatomy plus history and physical examination will help us to narrow the differential diagnosis then necessary investigations has to be considered or and there is need for confirmation of diagnosis okay so what are the things which usually which we usually ask in the history one is 
age of the patient okay in old age people we can see there will be osteoarthritis okay second one is gender certain diseases are more common in females Ex example is cts whereas gout is mainly seen in males hand dominance and occupation which are prone to develop the uncertain diseases like vibration may produce cts etc okay. history of trauma whether it is a recent onset or a distant onset and we have to assess the severity of pain okay the patient by assessing the pain the quality of pain or the character of the pain we can assess we can assess the we can come to a near diagnosis okay if present throughout the day if if present throughout the day and throughout the day and if if pain increases on and activities then it is can be considered as a degenerative to say can be considered as a degenerative arthritis whereas in a case of tendinitis what will happen patient will be having pain mainly on activities okay whereas in rheumatoid and uh, inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis apart from pain there will be morning stiffness and there will be normally bilateral bilateral symmetrical involvement bilateral symmetrical involvement even though it may not be seen in the early stage and if in case of nerve entrapment we can see that it is more in the paresthesia and the symptoms may be more pain and will be more in the night time okay if the patient is having one more condition if the patient is having pain over wrist pain over thumb while opening a bottle then it indicates arthritis of base of thumb Patient, patient, patient will be having pain and difficulty in opening a bottle. Okay. Then after coming to uh, completing history, we can go into the physical examination. What all things we will look for in physical examination? We have to examine both. involved as well as uninvolved uninvolved extremity okay then the examination should include should include include proximal joints which are the proximal joints elbow shoulder and cervical spine okay
coming to the examination proper first as in exam musculoskeletal examination we have to have a inspection whether there is any swelling scar any deformity any redness or erythema okay then after inspection we will go to palpation okay first as any physical examination first we should look whether there is any local rise of temperature okay then we have to assess whether there is any tenderness then we have to assess whether there is any increased pulsations then we have to uh, from palpation including in the palpation we have to assess the range of movements of all joints okay both active as well as active as well as passive then we have to then we have to assess the motor system sensory system and we have to assess the reflexes also to narrow the differential diagnosis okay if needed we have to do special tests also which are which are the special tests for is one is phalanx test for phalanx or reverse phalanx test or durkan's test for cts and second one is finkelstein test finkelstein test for done for dqts these are the special tests after having a set of differential diagnosis then we we have to do investigations what are the investigations which we commonly do in a patient with wrist and hand pain in any case we have to do first cbc esr and crt okay then we have to rule out whether the patient is having any diabetes mellitus so fps and ppbs has to be checked then moving to imaging okay first one is x ray x ray may be ap lateral oblique or any special views may be needed okay then comes musculoskeletal ultrasound then comes ct scan okay then comes mri then comes bone scan then comes arthrography then comes electro diagnosis for assessing the any entrapment neuropathies okay there is a fusion and we have to do aspiration and analysis especially in cases of gout and other inflammatory conditions then we have to do arthroscopy arthroscopy is considered as the gold standard for gold standard for chronic wrist pain okay so now we can go to the individual conditions first we can consider 
wrist pain mainly palma one is first we have said that it is main first one is carpal tunnel syndrome which is a commonest neuropathy in the upper limb okay usually occurs as a isolated phenomenon but it can come it may accompany diabetes mellitus pregnancy obesity rheumatoid arthritis and gout clinical features are nocturnal paresthesia okay and patient may have positive flick sign okay diagnosis is by clinic apart from clinical examination there will be tinel sign tinel sign may be positive there is phalanx test there is darken carpal tunnel compression test okay then to assess the severity we can do electro diagnosis and we can do ultra sonogram we can assess the depending upon the cross sectional area we can divide it in a, we can classify it as mild moderate or severe so we are well versed with the management of cts with the splinting nsaids medications like gabapentin in splinting we should not splinting should be in the neutral position and it should not be more than 10 degree extension that is the one thing which we should remember splinting splinting should be in the neutral position should not be more than should not be more than 10 degree extension should not be more than okay and there is no re relief we can give corticosteroid injections care should be taken to avoid injury to the median nerve or vessel okay then definite treatment is for severe cases we have to do de-roofing or surgical release okay this is about carpal tunnel syndrome now comes the cubital tunnel syndrome cubital tunnel syndrome in which ulnar nerve here the ulnar nerve is affected at the cubital tunnel ulnar nerve is affected at the cubital tunnel there will be paresthesia of little and ring fingers tinel sign will be present you can diagnose the lesion we can see that there will be positive tinel cell one thing is that in contrast to cts there will be the early atrophy of the intrinsics mainly first dorsal interosseous muscles first dorsal interosseous muscle okay X-ray may be helpful to identify whether there is any supracondylar fracture. Okay. Tardy ulnar palsy may occur. Tardy ulnar palsy may occur in as a late complications. Okay. Treatment is by elbow splint. Elbow splint is to prevent flexion. Beyond fifty to fifty to 
70 degree and treatment definite treatment is by surgical decompression okay then ulnar nerve at ulnar entrapment ulnar nerve entrapment at gaion's canal which we are very familiar okay okay we can see that the distal branches of ulnar nerve and artery passes through the gaion's canal and ulnar nerve divides into sensory and motor branches so there will be involvement of sensory and motor part depending upon the level of entrapment there are four types of involvement are c four types of involvement are c usual causes are one is trauma then fracture hamet hook of hamet then space occupying lesions like space occupying lesions like lipoma ganglion etc treatment is if there is surgery we have to if there is a, sorry if there is a fracture we have to correct it and if there is space occupying lesions like lipoma etc we have to surgically remove it okay surgical excision then another common one is flexor carpi ulnaris and radialis tendinitis that is flexor fcu and fcr tendinitis okay this is usually seen with forced wrist flexion for a prolonged periods forced wrist flexion for prolonged period okay Here there will be inflammation of FCU and FCR. Okay, treatment is by splinting NSAIDs, and we can try corticosteroid injections. Okay. we can see that so other condition is hamate fracture usually you will have fracture of fracture hamate usually common is that fracture there will be fracture of hook of hamate okay here the cause is fall in fall on outstretched hand okay outstretch wrist outstretch hand there will be involvement of since hook of hamate in hook of hamate fracture one thing is that there will be involvement of ulnar nerve okay And the diagnosis is we have to do a carpal tunnel radiograph so in special position with wrist in hyper extended position hyper extended and treatment is by casting if casting fails 
we have to do surgery this comes to end wrist pain in the palmar aspect okay now comes move we can move into wrist pain dorsal aspect wrist pain dorsal aspect palmar aspect finished then then second uh, second one is wrist pain dorsal aspect which are the things seen in the dorsal aspect first one is most common is ganglion 70% of ganglion is seen in the dorsal region of wrist as we all know that the, there will be mucin filled mucin filled cyst okay diagnosis is by will you diagnose clinical examination and ultrasonography or sometimes mri to differentiate it from other swellings treatment is by we can control symptoms by splinting or by giving rest otherwise there is no it is not uh, subsiding we have to do aspiration and followed by corticosteroid infiltration or injection aspiration plus corticosteroid okay and sometimes we have to do surgery and there is involvement of nerve especially posterior interosseous okay after ganglion the second one is carpal bos what do you mean by carpal bos say bony non mobile prominence seen over dorsum of wrist okay this is mainly due to you know osteoarthritic spur osteoarthritic spur this is due to okay seen over second or third cmc carpal meter carpal joints okay then comes second um, other condition is third condition is extensor tendinopathy okay which is the most common tendon affected this uh, extensor pollicis longus is the most common affected early diagnosis and treatment is necessary early diagnosis and treatment is necessary because the tendon there is risk for rupture of the tendon risk risk of tendon rupture okay then comes so our fourth condition is keen bock disease which we will we are very familiar keen bock disease it is a vascular necrosis of lunate okay usually seen in patients with ulnar negative variants what do you mean by ulnar negative variants ulna will be shorter than ulna will be shorter than radius okay x ray and mri may be needed treatment is by surgery okay then comes the scapulo lunate other condition is scapulo lunate indrosius ligament injury okay 
scapular lunate interosseous ligament injury. Here, large force causes disruption of the, there will be disruption of the ligament. Disruption of the ligament. Okay, X-ray will show scaffold lunate dislocation and treatment is by surgery. Then another condition is gout and inflammatory arthritis. Gout and inflammatory arthritis is the another condition which we are very familiar. Okay, I am not going to detail of gout and inflammatory arthritis. Then we go comes to the third one that is wrist pain, ulnar side. So you can think about which are, which are, which are the conditions on the ulnar side. Okay, first one is triangular fibro cartilage complex injury. It is mainly caused by hyperpronation or hyper supination of wrist. Okay. Alna on a clinical examination alna will appear alna is dislocated. Okay. Diagnosis is by X-ray and CT scan. Okay. In clinical features I have forgotten to mention the clinical features there will be painful clicking on wrist rotation and there will be pain below the extensor carpi ulnaris tendon okay Here, diagnosis is by we have already said that there will be diagnosis diagnosis is by x-ray and CT scan so what what all things we can see in the x-ray x-ray PA view with the shoulder abducted at 90 degree elbow flex to 90 degree and forearm in neutral position okay CT or MRI may be needed we have doubt treatment is with splinting NSAIDs, arthroscopy, and surgical repair. Then comes extensor carpi ulnaris tendinitis and subluxation. This is another condition. Okay. This also occurs as a result of forced pronation or supination. Treatment is rest with the splinting and NSAIDs. Then there will be 
பிசோ ட்ரிக்ரூட்ரல் ஆர்த்ரைட்டிஸ் பிசோ ட்ரிக்யூட்ரல் ஆர்த்ரைட்டிஸ் ஓகே யூஸ்வலி இட் இஸ் போஸ்ட் ட்ரோமேட்டிக் ட்ரீட்மெண்ட் இஸ் ரெஸ்ட் ஸ்ப்ளின்ஸ் நெசேடிஸ் அண்ட் ஃபார்ட்டிகோ ஸ்டீரியட்ஸ் ஓகே அண்ட் நவ் வீ கேன் மூவ் இன் டு ரிஸ்ட் பெயின் ரேடியல் அண்ட் தம் ஃபோர்த் கேட்டகரி ஓகே மோஸ்ட் காமன் இஸ் வி ஆர் ஆல் வெரி ஃபெமிலியர் வித் டீக்யூட்டிஸ் ஹியர் மெயின் டெண்டன்ஸ் இன்வால்வ் ஆர் எக்ஸ்டென்சர் போலிசிஸ் ப்ரெவிஸ் அண்ட் அப்டக்டர் போலிசிஸ் லாங்கஸ் டெண்டன்ஸ் ஆர் எஃபெக்டட் ஓகே usually seen in women and treat me will usually gives thumb spike it will keep the thumb in abduction and extension okay on clinical examination there will be swelling at the radial side radial styloid in severe cases there will be correct cracking sound okay we all know that the diagnosis one of the diagnostic test is fingelstein test fingelstein fingelstein test okay and the treatment is rest splinting corticosteroid injections okay then another thing is that we intersection syndrome recurrence thinus synovitis and intersection syndrome here there will be tendinopathy main thing is that there will be tendinopathy of radial wrist extensors within the second dorsal compartment okay treatment is rest NSAIDs and surgery okay then another thing is basal joint arthropathy here cmc of the thumb is affected there will be inflammation and pain over cmc of thumb there will be there may be joint subluxation and abnormal cartilage wear and this leads to pain diagnosis is by x-ray treatment is by treatment is immobilization with splints and 
NSAIDs can be given for corticosteroids injections can also be given corticosteroids okay then there are other conditions like volar ganglia is less common then there is trigger finger in which there will be thickening of a1 pulley thickening of a1 pulley treatment is by we can give splinting splinting steroid injections into the tendon uh, area between the tendon and the shield when we can in refractory cases we have to do surgery where we will do longitudinal division of longitudinal division of a1 pulley at the level of metacarpal head the level of metacarpal head okay then coming to the region of digits where will be where we will see mallet finger okay in mallet finger what is there there will be loss of terminal terminal extension of da and another thing is osteoarthritis of digits which will be seen as herbardens nodes herbardens nodes okay then tumors last one is tumors there will be simple bone system and encounter mass last one is infection infection what all infection usually there will be peronic and commonest organism is staphylococcus aureus with this we will be ending this lecture note with that you have to know a thorough anatomy you have to take proper history and physical examination and you have to do only necessary investigations and treat accordingly depending upon the conditions thank you